He supercharged the banjo and mandolin and created an American art form. He's the father of bluegrass music. The life and times of Bill Monroe next on CMT. musical art form from the grassroots up. Make no bones about it, there would be no bluegrass without Bill Monroe. I still don't think that he has been honored as much as he should. I think he's a national treasure. Bill Monroe really created what we can as Americans can say, this is American music, more so than country music. He plays great mandolin and has a great sense of rhythm, and, uh, and yet uh, his pride and his determination to do his thing is, has to be recognized and respected. Bluegrass is crisp and clean and easy to understand, unlike the man who gave it birth. The complex and guarded nature of Bill Monroe's personality has driven his legend as much as his music has. When you talk about Monroe, you talk about a different breed of human being than you've ever, you've never seen anybody like him in your life and you never will again. He's an enigma. At one time, he'll be very withdrawn, very within himself, but he can also be wonderfully concerned with the people around him and be very generous. He's not at all one-sided or easily described. He's a, a hard man, and strength and power is his, is his leader. If you're not strong, you're, you're not worthy. You've got to be strong, and you've got to prove to him that you're strong also. and I came from the same type of little town in Kentucky. You gotta know those people and you gotta know their attitudes. It's different. It's not the same as any other place on earth. They expect everything out of you that they feel that you can get out of yourself. And, and I've, I've grown up looking at that and, and having to face that inside myself and I've seen it in my brother and other people. My father had that same little, little thing. Monroe has it too. Maybe it's rooted in his Scottish heritage, or maybe his traditional rural upbringing. But high expectation and fierce determination are the steely fabric of Bill Monroe's personality. He was born in Rosine, Kentucky, September 13, 1911, the youngest of eight children. Bill Monroe had a, had a hard raising. Uh, he was the last child uh, his father was 54 his mother was 41 when he was born he also had severe uh, vision problems he was cross-eyed uh, he couldn't see very well uh, later he was able to correct these in, a, in adult life but growing up this uh, presented a great deal of difficulty for him so he didn't have a lot of playmates he couldn't play ball he once uh, told another uh, interviewer that when strangers would come to the house, he would run and hide in the barn. Uh, so he grew up with a lot of loneliness, a lot of anger, and I think those things greatly influenced the man he later became. They certainly influenced his music. There was never a time when music wasn't a part of Bill's life. Music was life in Rosine, from the gospel singing at church to his mother's fiddle playing in the kitchen. 
everyone in the Monroe family played music. He's often said when people ask him why he chose to play the mandolin, it was the, you know, the last instrument left. The other good instruments, the fiddle and the guitar, had already been taken. He has always wanted to show people uh, what he could achieve. It was as if he were saying, all right, I'll show you what I can do with this little mandolin that you've stuck me with. And I'm going to be better than all of you. And I think that's carried all the way through his life. I do know he's a strong-willed person. I do know that. And he makes up his mind that's the way it's going to be. Sheer will and physical strength were Bill's survival techniques. Hard work on the family farm built character and muscle. I could shoulder a cross tie, you know, six by eight or seven by nine, and um, and I and I drove horses and wagons and and I put thirty cross ties on the wagon and boom them down, you know, and from way back out in the country in the hills and. Then my horses would pull the wagon right on into Rosie in Kentucky. Hauling ties his father sold to the railroad allowed him to meet strangers from outside Rosine. Arnold Schultz was one, a black railroad worker, farmhand, and musician who introduced Bill to a different type of folk music. Arnold was a fine guitar player, and he could really play the time good. And he put in, played a lot of blues. And he would he would come up there to Rosine and bring his guitar, and and everybody up there liked to hear him play the blues on the whole guitar. The blues influence of Arnold Schultz and other black musicians would show up in bluegrass, but its foundation was firmly centered around traditional mountain string music, the music of Uncle Penn. Uncle Penn was Pendleton Vandiver, Bill's uncle on his mother's side. He was an awful good uncle. And uh, he was a good, good, honest man, truthful. I just thought a lot of him. And I just, uh, I loved his fiddle playing. Bill lived with Uncle Penn after his father died. Uh, his father died when Bill was 16. His mother had died several years earlier. And so the, the two of them had that uh, uh, kind of bonding experience, living together. As he described it, they batched it. And I think that that, have, that was very formative for Bill. It was, uh, uh, it was becoming a man for him. And um, Uncle Penn's fiddling um, was very informative on Bill's music. And Uncle Penn had a natural kind of a flow in his music that we hear in a lot of Bill's music as well. Bill was 18 when Uncle Penn died. It was the time of the Great Depression, and much of Bill's family had moved north to find work. He, too, would say goodbye to Kentucky. Some days, you know, that you needed a job, you know, where there were, you, you could have some money coming in. And so uh, I went to work for Sinclair Refinery Company over there at East Chicago, Indiana. And uh, they, they paid me good, and I'd work six days a week. He was cleaning barrels. Uh, he was working very hard. I think he enjoyed the physical labor as he has always had. He's never been afraid of, of hard work. In fact, he's reveled in it. Uh, he once said that he could throw a, uh, an oil barrel like he later was able to throw a baseball, throw it on down to the next man. Um, but at times, he was the sole breadwinner for uh, the family. It wasn't easy to keep a job at that time, and I think it does say a lot for Bill that he, he worked hard and and uh, um, he was very determined to get ahead and, and, and to make his own way. I think that uh, Bill's younger days, uh, he was probably the puny guy. 
you know, he's the one they keep saying down at the beach. And I think it, it hardened him and, uh, and it taught him in his mind that, you know, he had to be strong. That's what he taught me. He taught me to stand up in the face of anything and be tough. I don't think there's never been a more determined human being than Bill Monroe. Never. He's the he's a toughest old bird that I've ever seen in my life. The Life and Times of Bill Monroe returns in a moment on CM. Everything Blue is new again on CMT. From the craftsmen in the Blue Ridge Mountains. How can you not love a man like To the world stage. I am a man. The bluegrass sound is bigger than ever. Why is it so hot right now? Find out in Bluegrass Sound, a CMT original show hosted by Vince Gill. Friday at 8, 7 Central and 8 Pacific. Part of CMT Bluegrass Rules. New year, new shows. CMT. CMT Bluegrass Rules Week is brought to you by Kellogg's. Tomorrow morning, help yourself with Kellogg's. I had a starvation diet once. Or the meat diet, the one where you eat just meat. I diet sometimes, but only in moderation. The low-fat diet. It was all pureed food, puree diet. The bean diet. The corn juice diet. That one was rough. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. These people found a sensible way to lose weight. A recent study by a major university found that having a bowl of Kellogg's Special K or Kellogg's Smart Start for two meals a day for two weeks could help you lose up to six pounds. I feel great. And I didn't have to eat like a rabbit. <laughs> Got a bad cold? Head all blocked up? New Alka-Seltzer Plus has a new effervescent cold-fighting formula that breaks up your worst cold symptoms. New Alka-Seltzer Plus. Wear contacts? Visine for contacts does more than re-wet your lenses. It really, really refreshes your eyes. Visine for contacts gets the dry out when contacts are in. I was really heavy and I knew I needed to lose weight. But when you're busy cooking for your family and you have a job that has unpredictable hours, I knew I couldn't keep to the restrictions of a diet. Then I found out Jenny Craig customizes plans just for me. Call 1-800-JENNY-20 and ask about the new Ultimate Choice program for the new year. Lose all the weight you want in 2002 for $49 plus the cost of food. With Jenny Craig, I lost 80 pounds. It changed my life without changing the way that I live. Fresh maker. One of these women uses suave herbal care hairspray. The other spends more for clairol herbal essences. Both give great hold. Both keep their styles looking fresh and fabulous. Okay, who uses suave and who pays loftier prices? If you can't tell, why should we? Suave, don't you look smart? We're here with Amanda. She just got married. Can't you tell? All these appliances, there has to be an easier way to cook. The simplest appliance is right in your drawer. Reynolds Wrap Heavy Duty Foil. Oh, let's try chicken parmesan. Just wrap ingredients into packets and bake to lock in all the flavor and nutrients. Wow. Mm, I think they like it. Yeah. Does it get any better? Sure. No cleanup. Reynolds Wrap. It's the way that you do it. Ready and hold. What do you all think? All right. Good job. The U.S. Hot Rod Monster Jam. Presented by Ford Trucks. Part of the Wendy's Motorsport Series. Brave Digger is back with a full feed of U.S. Hot Rod Legend plus Megasaurus. And more and kid seats are still five bucks yet to wendy's now and register to be the big wheel of the neighborhood it's your chance to win front row seats a private pit party and more monster jam 8 p.m friday and saturday night and only at greenboro coliseum are you ready for high-speed internet access? Introducing AOL High-Speed Broadband. Now available with Time Warner Cable. We're talking fast. Everything you love about America Online. Email, instant messages, parental controls. Click, you're there. 
Get your favorite music videos and games at lightning speed. Not just broadband, AOL High Speed Broadband. Call 1-800-922-7951 today or go to America Online, keyword cable. Call today and get free installation, free activation, and a free modem to use. America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. The life and times of Bill Monroe continues on CMT. The factories and refineries of Chicago put a little money in the Monroe's pockets, but not a lot of spirit in their hearts. So after work, Bill and his brothers, Charlie and Birch, played their Kentucky Hill music at dances and on local radio stations. They were pretty good. Good enough that in 1934, Bill and Charlie decided to become full-time professionals. They were sponsored by a laxative company called Texas Crystals, uh, and then ultimately by Crazy Water Crystals, which was a rival company. And they could play courthouses and schoolhouses and, uh, you know, and make pretty decent money. They had nice cars. They, they dressed in fine white suits. Uh, and Lester Flatt later said, uh, you know, when he saw them, they looked like moving statues uh, moving down the small town streets uh, and, were, and were quite impressive. In 1936, the Monroe brothers recorded their first release, What Will You Give in Exchange for Your Soul? Bill might have given his soul not to have to play second fiddle to brother Charlie. Still, it beat working in the refinery. Although lifting all those barrels did have unexpected rewards. They were once playing a schoolhouse and some uh, teenage boys were trying to beat the admission price by uh, sitting up in the ledges of the windows and watching the show uh, without, without paying. And so uh, Charlie went up to him, uh, grabbed one and punched him in the face and threw him Bill's way and, uh, you know, Bill hit him again and, you know, they just cleaned out about 25 of them. Finally, the, the, uh, the authorities came and lined the boys up and made them pay. I heard a story one time they fought six guys and they put their backs together, Bill and Charlie did, and just went around and around. There was nobody that could take them down. I mean, they were the strongest. I saw Bill Monroe was interviewed by Bobby Lord and, and Bill said, you see this man right here? And he was pointing at himself. He said, this man right here has never been knocked down. <laughs> Bare-fisted or otherwise, the success of the Monroe brothers was indisputable. Even so, Bill didn't want to be dominated by his older brother, and he had higher expectations for the group than Charlie did. Charlie was a great singer and a great guitar player, but Bill really had the deal. I mean, he had the talent. He had the mind for the music. He had the vision for the music. He's brilliant. When Bill was able to, uh, to break away from Charlie when the, when the split finally occurred, uh, at first he acted like he didn't quite know what to do with his freedom. Uh, all of a sudden he was uh, able to do it just the way he wanted to do it. One of the things that he wanted to try to do was to uh, play a type of music that was faster and more supercharged and more instrumentally demanding than the kind that he played with Charlie. And one of the things Bill first did was to put together a band that could play tunes at very difficult keys and very difficult tempos at breakneck speed. The strength and athleticism that were such a part of Bill Monroe were finally being expressed in his emerging style of music. He put a new band together in Atlanta with the goal of making it to Nashville, a band he named after his home state, the Bluegrass Boys. Bill showed up at the Grand Ole Opry for an audition in October 1939 with that four-piece band, and he was accepted on the Grand Ole Opry at that time. An awful lot of people dressed like cowboys or hayseeds in one way or another, and Monroe would have none of that. They, the band wore um, white shirts and ties and, and, and coats, and they wore Stetsons, and they often wore jodhpurs, riding pants and, and boots. They had a very spiffy look, and, and <laughs> that was part of, part of the image which he kept all through the 40s. Bill said that at the time that he came into this music, that country music made fun of rural people. It made fun of people that lived in the country. And he said he wanted his music to be for country people and entertain country people. It wasn't going to be any freckles or 
pieces of straw in anybody's mouth or anything like that. That's a lot of the early concept of bluegrass music. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, John. The Bluegrass Boys' first big hit and their debut song at the Opry was Mule Skinner Blues, the old Jimmy Rogers number. It was one of only a handful of songs in his career that Bill Monroe himself would not write. And he'd write a lot. I knew the fiddle needed to be the, the lead instrument. And the five-string band and the mandolin would work right there with him. And a good guitar rhythm man could play guitar timing. And that bass meant a lot, you know, to help keep the time and play it right. So uh, everything just worked out awful good right there. In the early 40s, with the power and the security of the Grand Old Opry behind him, Bill was able to fine-tune the sound he was after and experiment with promising new bandsmen. 1943, I uh, just happened to hear at the Grand Ole Opry that night and I heard Bill announce that he was gonna lose his fiddle player. So uh, I caught the train, went to Nashville, walked right in the dressing room just like I knew what I was doing and introduced myself. I said, Bill, I said, my name's Chubby Wells. I'm from Florida, I play the fiddle. I want that job. He, I said, do you know any of my stuff? You know, Bill talks kind of gruff. He said, do you know any of my stuff? I said, yes, sir. I didn't know a lot, but I knew some of it. I got my fiddle out, and I played Footprints in the Snow for him. And he looked at me, I'll never forget it, the way he said, he said, have you got your clothes with you? <laughs> I said, no, sir. I said, they're in the hotel. He said, well, go get it. We'll be leaving in two hours. <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> By 1946, Monroe had put together the band that became the most celebrated in the history of the Bluegrass Boys. It featured Chubby Wise and two names that would become as famous as Bill Monroe himself, Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs. That was the band that, for all practical purposes, defined bluegrass from the stage of the Ryman Auditorium. If you listen to some of the old uh, radio air checks back in those days, uh, you can see how much excitement there was in the air. And you could hear the audience just simply scream. It was kind of like Elvis was going to be 20 years later. It was one of those cusps of American music where you realize that you know something new has happened, and uh, all of a sudden things are never going to be the way they were before. Bill said he always wanted his own style of music. And after years of perfecting it, that sound finally clicked. His tenor lead vocals were hauntingly high. And the traditional ensemble of string instruments worked together in a new way, behind Monroe's supercharged tempo. Everybody took a turn, so you, you got this shifting of focus from lead to backup in the instruments. It was much more like contemporary jazz of that period than it was uh, like the contemporary country music. You got a wrench out there and tightened everything up. The guitar does this, the fiddle does this, and it's everything is very clearly defined. And he made it work over one microphone on a radio station. The Life and Times of Bill Monroe returns in a moment on CMT. I'm Katie Cook with a CMT news break. New mom Shania Twain has steered clear of the public eye lately, but that hasn't hurt record sales one bit. Come on, Noah, come on in. Twain's 1997 album, Come On Over, has sold more than 14 million copies, making it the top-selling disc in the United States since SoundScan began keeping tabs in 1991. With hits like Love Gets Me Every Time and Don't Be Stupid, Come On Over is the only country CD included among the top 10 bestsellers of the past decade. Twain has been holed up 
in Switzerland with her husband, producer Mutt Lang, and their new son, Asia. She's also reportedly working on her first new album since 1997, which should be released later this year. For more music news, just check out our website at country.com. CMT News is brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Band 
on his shoulders using a large beam that he stretched across his shoulders and had all the band climb on there. And he said, uh, I asked him about it, and he said that uh, he just didn't know how stout he was and wanted to see whether he could do it, and he, and he did. And there was five of them. They all weighed 960 pounds, and I carried them all at one time. I'm really proud of that. Bill Monroe has always worked hard um, during the late 40s. Um, he would help put up the tents for his uh, tent shows and drive the stakes uh, himself, and he'd be able to outwork anybody else in the band. They would come into town, they would pitch their tent just like a three-ring circus and do a show there in the tent. And he found it worked very well because he could have the people who were doing the roustabout work in the tents uh, also sometimes double on his ball team, and he could put together a package of all the things he really liked best. Traveling acts staged baseball games to attract attention to the tent shows. Bill Monroe was no exception. Bill was an avid baseball fan and was quite a good player. His eyesight, again, uh, hampered him as far as making a career out of it had he ever wanted to. But uh, he was just, he'd sit and watch those Sandlot games just like they were big league games and root for the guys he liked. There are several occasions when he took his baseball team so seriously that he would actually hire a musician, not because he was especially a good musician, but because he was a good shortstop or a good first baseman. On a deeper sense, baseball's a whole lot like uh, bluegrass music in that everybody has their chance at bat to, to, to see what they can do. The bluegrass band, the way it works, everybody has his chance at the microphone to show what he can do and then the audience applauds. Everyone had their turn at the mic, but there was no mistaking who was the boss. Well, if you didn't do it Bill Monroe's way, you, you didn't work for Bill. <laughs> That's the thing about it. You either did it like Bill wanted or you just look for something else to do. The pride and sense of commitment he built his music with left little room for compromise. Goodwill turned bad when band members began exerting their will and going out on their own. Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs uh, left Monroe's band early in 1948, and um, I think that was quite a blow to Bill. Um, he didn't speak to either Flatt or Scruggs for, for many years, not until they themselves uh, split up in the late 60s. He felt like that they were had their hand in his pocket or eaten out of his corn crib, and that hampered his uh, constructive thinking for a while. And uh, he thought maybe they were kind of deserting him. I thought maybe they should have shown a little more loyalty. I think it came a time when they wanted to flop their wings and try it on their own, and they flew pretty well. Many other bluegrass boys left the band in years to come with similar consequences. We kind of had a, a, a professional misunderstanding <laughs> in in the mid '60s, and uh, we didn't we didn't talk to each other for uh, oh I don't know two or three years. And uh, the night that uh, Monroe was uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh, I saw him in the parking lot downtown, and I rolled the window down and I yelled at him and I said, hey, come over here. And he walked over and I said, no one deserved it more. And I'm proud that you're there, you know. And uh, he had a little tear in his eye. And we've been very close since then. Very close. He's not one to forget anything overnight. Uh, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, and I, I don't believe it, that he really means to be that way, but that's just Bill Monroe. He, I don't believe he really means to hold good, but he will. He, he just don't forget things. He, he's like an elephant that's mad. <laughs> when you make Bill mad, he's mad all over and stay that way. <laughs> I think a lot of times uh, people didn't understand him, but he's not easy to understand, Bill Monroe. He's a complicated person. Losing bandsmen tested Bill's resolve, but nothing veered him off course. He simply kept redefining bluegrass with each new lineup. Strength was his leader, and not even illness or accidents would keep him down long. I remember when Bill had his bad car accident, and uh, they had him in a cast uh, fr from his neck 
clear down and just the tips of his toes. The whole body was in a cast. And I prayed for him. I really prayed. He won't allow anything to keep him down, uh, including uh, bypass surgery. He was up and about, and uh, it was four or five weeks. He was ready to go again. He is tough. If somebody says he can't do something, he'll show them that he can do it. <laughs> people who survive and have the best health and survive the longest seem to be people that are, have really good self-image. Bill talks a lot about himself in the third person. And he really admires himself. He's a great fan of himself. And I think that's, that's a survival technique for him. Bill would call on his survival techniques more than ever as the 50s rocked in. The electrified tidal wave of rock and roll swept acoustic music far from shore. And with it, the very essence of Bill Monroe. The Life and Times of Bill Monroe returns in a moment on CMT. I was really heavy and I knew I needed to lose weight. But when you're busy cooking for your family and you have a job that has unpredictable hours, I knew I couldn't keep to the restrictions of a diet. Then I found out Jenny Craig customizes plans just for me. Call 1-800-JENNY-20 and ask about the new Ultimate Choice program for the new year. Lose all the weight you want in 2002 for $49 plus the cost of food. With Jenny Craig, I lost 80 pounds. It changed my life without changing the way that I live. Mama keeps our house sparkling like sunshine. Mama keeps our bathroom fresh like the springtime. Mama keeps it all clean with the magic. Mama's got the magic of Clorox. Clorox automatic toilet bowl cleaner. With every flush, you get a rinse of bleach. So you're sure you're killing germs and leaving your bathroom smelling fresh. Mama's got the magic. Clorox automatic toilet bowl cleaner. Mama's got the magic of Clorox. I can't concentrate. Could I be pregnant? When you need to know if you're pregnant, nothing is more accurate than EPT. It's over 99% accurate. EPT. So accurate, we call it the error-proof test. It's good to know. How long does she have to wait for relief when she's miserable with a cold? As fast as you can open the vapor up, she can begin to feel like she's breathing again. No pill or syrup can give her that. Vapor up. The quick fix. What do great-looking cats have in common? The best-tasting Friskies ever, with the unique flavor cats love. Friskies Total Health Formula gives your cat the complete and balanced nutrition he needs. Friskies, it's the tastiest way to feed your cat right. Clog got you bent out of shape? Get Drano Max. Drano Max removes clogs better than professional spank liquid plumber because it's thicker. Relax, you got Drano Max. Fresh maker. There are big things in store for you at your North Carolina Zoo. A new bridge and African giants. A new African marketplace and old friends. A new climbing tree for the return troop. Join the zoo. Visit it and over 100 others free. Memberships start at $29. Family memberships start at $59. Plan a big year. Reach us at 888-244-3736 or www.nczoo.com. National Geographic brings the spirit of adventure and exploration to life with the introduction of the new National Geographic channel. Tune in and be a part of the continuing story of life on Earth. Every day on the new National Geographic Channel. Experience the National Geographic Channel on Time Warner Cable. The very best in TV keeps getting better. The life and times of Bill Monroe continues on CMT.
when America turned its ear away from traditional acoustic music for the new electric sound, artists true to their roots felt it the most, like Bill Monroe. The late 50s were lean years for Bill Monroe. The, these were the years in which uh, a lot of traditional acts saw their, their gate receipts and their record sales plummet. Uh, some country radio stations were converting to rock and roll, and Bill's bookings fell off markedly and as a result it was it was hard for him to keep a band together uh, many times he'd start out for a show date with just a single side man and try to pick up other musicians uh, along the way but he just sort of uh, held his head up and uh, kept on going he never left the course of the bluegrass he stayed right dead straight ahead he never veered one way or the other in his mind he knew what he was doing was right, you know, and uh, nothing could stray him from that. Thankfully, what he has done has appealed at various times in his career to great numbers of people at other times to very few. Music is his life. Well, he's been married and divorced twice. I think that Bill has not had a happy family life and that's one of the reasons why uh, his music has brought him such happiness. He treated me and my sister fine. He didn't spend a whole lot of time with us. We didn't get to see him a whole lot, but um, we never stopped our respect or love for him, you know. But um, I think he took care of us the best he could. I think there's a point in an entertainer's life when he can make a decision if he wants to have a home life and also be an entertainer. You can do both, but just, it's a hard call in there. I think there was a time when Bill Monroe became strictly Bill Monroe. The, the entertainer. It overrode everything else. He couldn't really be a married person at that point. And, uh, I think that was hard on my mother. Uh, in fact, I know it was. Shine on the one that's gone and said goodbye. Bill Monroe's music has always been intensely personal. That's why it may have surprised folks when he supported Elvis Presley's hepped up remake of a traditional Monroe classic. When Elvis come around, he won't know what I thought about the way he, he sung the Blue Moon of Kentucky. And I told him, well, if, if Blue Moon of Kentucky would help him take care of everything and give him a good start, give him a good chance there to play his music right, the way he wanted it played, that I was for him 100%. Bill's misgivings about his music and how it was played had more to do with his contemporaries than the new upstarts. When other bands started playing in that style, uh, I think it was, uh, it was a threat to Bill Monroe. It, was, it came as a surprise to him because he felt that was imitation and, and competition, and it was only gradually uh, that he realized that, that uh, he had started a whole new style of music uh, and, and it took him a long time uh, to accept the existence of those other groups as a compliment and a tribute uh, rather than a threat. By 1963, the success of rock and roll and country music groups like Flat and Scruggs had all but shifted the focus away from the innovations of Bill Monroe. But it was also the beginning of the folk music movement, which rewrote Bill's role in music history. There was kind of a breakthrough, and that, that breakthrough came because of a fellow named Ralph Rensler. And Ralph uh, was himself a mandolin player and a folk music enthusiast. And, and uh, he, he was very uh, disturbed by the fact that uh, Monroe was not getting the credit that he deserved. Uh, amongst the folk music fans. Rensler started writing about Monroe, 
booking him on the folk circuit and revealing who the true father of bluegrass really was. It was at this point that bluegrass uh, began to acquire an institutional uh, life of its own and of course Monroe became the center of that life. I don't know of anybody else in country music that has entire festivals all over the world dedicated to his music. It didn't seem at the time that, that country music was very interested in bluegrass. Um, and uh, by 1971, the festivals had gotten to the point that they, you couldn't ignore them. They, they become, there were hundreds of them. So Monroe suddenly uh, became clearly the, you know, the leading pioneer in this music. And his being in, inducted into the Hall of Fame really coincided with the taking off of bluegrass music in, in the early 70s. And the people all over the whole world, they sang the songs with, that I wrote, you see. And I'm proud of that. The Life and Times of Bill Monroe returns in a moment on CMT. Bluegrass rules on CMT's live and legendary Saturday night. Walking in his footsteps in the sweet belt of dawn. First, Vince Gill makes an appearance on CMT's all-new Most Wanted Live. And Vince brings his smoking bluegrass live to the Opry stage. Then celebrate the birth of bluegrass on the critically acclaimed Century of Country. Everything blue is new again on CMT's live and legendary Saturday night. Starting at 7, 6 Central and 7 Pacific. Part of CMT Bluegrass Rules. New year, new shows. CMT. CMT Bluegrass Rules Week is brought to you by Kellogg's. Tomorrow morning, help yourself with Kellogg's. Do I play sports? Yeah. Uh, fantasy football. I'm not trendy enough for a trendy diet. I would count calories, but I'm not very good at math. I'd like to run a marathon, but it's, it's, it's quite a long distance. I diet sometimes, but only in moderation. If these people can lose weight, so can you. A recent study by a major university found that having a bowl of Kellogg's Special K or Kellogg's Smart Start for two meals a day for two weeks could help you lose up to six pounds. I feel great. When your children have diarrhea, comfort them. Watch a favorite video. Be extra sweet to them. And to help prevent the risk of dehydration, give them Pedialyte. Sports drinks and clear sodas contain so much sugar, they can actually make diarrhea worse. But Pedialyte contains the correct balance of carbohydrates and electrolytes. And she doesn't need any more sugar. She's sweet enough already. At the first signs of diarrhea, use doctor-recommended Pedialyte. <laughs> I can't let old Mr. Hetherington take you away, Red. You need to be free again. Go on now! Get out of here! Yes. Please. Go. You have to go. With the leather interior and the available Honda DVD entertainment system... I'll never forget you! It's one of the joys of parenthood. Sorry, guys. I was dance class. The Odyssey from Honda. How old are you? Are you married? Have the kids done with the brothers or sisters? Do you like horses? Long lasting extra. Official gum of bumps in the road. Extra. It lasts, so you will too. Call Domino's for a free order of oven fresh cinna sticks when you buy any large one topping pizza for $9.99. Sprinkled with cinnamon sugar and served with creamy icing, they're tough to resist. So call now, because at Domino's, we've got the dinner thing covered. Get the door, it's Domino's. <coughs> cough waking you up? Get a new all night cough medicine. Introducing new NyQuil cough. The new all night coughing, 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 so you can sleep cough medicine from the makers of NyQuil. It doesn't matter what comes, fresh goes better in life, with mental fresh and full of life. Nothing gets to you, staying fresh, staying cool, with mental fresh and full of life.
trash maker. I've always loved working on computers, and in the Army, that's what I do. If you never thought about the U.S. Army or Army Reserve, think about this. There are 212 ways for you to become a soldier and work at a job you love. Call for this free video to find out which job is right for you. And if you call 1-800-645-ARMY right now, you'll also receive a free Army t-shirt with your video. Discover the 212 ways you can be an Army of One. The Life and Times of Bill Monroe continues on CMT. If Bill Monroe hadn't followed his musical muse, he might have devoted his life to farming. It's in his blood. He draws strength from these rolling acres north of Nashville, which he calls home. Strength from the land and the music that it's helped inspire. He's got this tremendous, tremendous work ethic and tremendous amount of self-discipline. He doesn't drink. He, he does things a certain way. His farm work is to keep him in shape to do the music. He understands that you need to have that other thing to give you a perspective on your art. I'm gonna put a new fence through here. Bill Monroe to be living in a, you know, in a mansion. But this is the most perfect place for Bill Monroe to be because this, this is his life. I brought a mandolin that I was considering on buying. And I, um, I brought it over and I wanted him to play it for me. I wanted him to, to listen to it and see what he thought about it, you know, and did it pass the Monroe test. And, and uh, he was playing it and he said, yeah, that's a, that's a good mandolin, you know, and yeah, you ought to buy that. And, you know, and we sat here and we played for an hour and we probably said 15 words in an hour, you know. And I got up to leave. I said, I got to go. I got to go get the kids at school. And, yeah. and uh, he said, boy, we, we talked about a lot of good things. You know, and we didn't say but 15 words maybe, but, but our, our spirits talked. I mean, we communicated. That's what he loves to do. He, he's, you know, he'll talk, you know, but he's really a man of few words, you know. He, his music is, a, is what's always spoken for him. Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed, too, when he's around young whippersnappers, you know, the younger generation of bluegrass musicians, I've seen him almost become a foot taller and his voice raise up a half an octave and his energy level raised. He is still capable of being inspired and energized by that. Bill's strength and spirit have kept him as active as someone half his age. But he's also battled cancer and heart disease, and they've made him even more aware of his own mortality. It's the topic of more than a few of his songs and heart-to-heart -heart talks with close friends. When they diagnosed that he had the cancer, uh, the phone rang one morning, and, and I, I picked it up, and, uh, how yeah, you doing? And I said, Bill, that you? Yeah. How you doing, son? He said, it's been a tough pull. But he said, I think I've got it whipped. <laughs> and then the heart thing, when I see him, I say, how, how are you? How you doing, you know? How you, you holding up all right? But last week was rough, but, but I'm, I'm coming out of it now. I want you to pull for me. That's his word. I want you to pull for me. I just have to admire him. I, that's the only thing, I, the only way I know how to put it. I got a lot of admiration for that man. He, he just, he's not going to give up. He don't give up at all with all of his problems. I'll tell you, Bill is tough as an old boot. He really is. The lonely cross-eyed boy who was once made fun of is now a man revered throughout the world. Over-anxious souvenir hunters take weathered boards from the walls of his boyhood home. His own yearly festival in Bean Blossom, Indiana, is a personal showcase for his music. And the International Bluegrass Museum in Owensboro, Kentucky, will tell you who the father of bluegrass is. Etched in copper. He 
he took a lot of pieces that were floating around and he just put the fire in them and he had the voice and he had the artistry on the mandolin and the vision about what he wanted to hear make no bones about it there would be no bluegrass without Bill Monroe it's hard to think of a music that's so clearly identifiable as bluegrass is that also is so clearly tied to a single individual well, you really can't say that any single person created rock and roll or jazz but bluegrass uh, just wouldn't exist without bill monroe bill's presence in country music is an interesting thing that is bill monroe's always been a little bit different than the honky-tonk singers like Ernest Tubb and so on. So he's provided a, a sort of an alternative uh, in the world of co country music right along. When you hear people say somebody is a living legend, what that means is that they have basically ceased to be productive and creative artists and they're coasting. And nobody in his right mind can say that Bill Monroe, even at age 85, is coasting. He's He's continuing to produce vibrant and exciting music, and he's continuing to, uh, to be out there and to meet his people and his fans and to encourage the music to develop. It's really an honor to represent him. You know, he's kind of, I, sometimes I feel like I'm a museum uh, curator uh, handling one of the priceless piece of, pieces of art in the world. As a boy, Bill said he wanted to create his own type of music. Most people would settle for a fresh new lick or riff. Sixty-some years later, he's proven beyond a doubt it pays to think big. He just knew that he knew that he knew. He was one of those sixth kind of sense things that he had, and that's the reason that he's been able to, to accomplish all the things that he's done. And that's the reason that a lot of people says, well, he's a stubborn old man. Well, if he's stubborn, it's because he's wanted to do it his way. And, and uh, you know, what's wrong with that? So is Frank Sinatra, you know, and so is George Burns. They're always the cutting edge, and that's, that's what Bill Monroe has always been. You don't work with a man as long as I work with him. There's got to be some feeling there, you know. I'll tell you that. He taught me a lot of stuff. He's a good teacher. I'm sour sometimes, but he's a good one. Sometimes I get so mad at him, I could strangle him. And then, but, but I'd, I'd put it on the line for him any hour of the day. If he called me at 3.30 in the morning and said, I need you to bring me a toothpick over here. Get up and get him a toothpick and take to him. And there's not many that wouldn't do that. He's just special. been a lot of people come along in the 50 odd years since he started the music who have tried to take his place and haven't been the songwriter or haven't been the singer or haven't been the instrumentalist that he is and I think we may not see in our lifetimes again someone who is as well-rounded and capable of doing it all as Bill Monroe. <laughs> really wonderful to know that I started that music and the people all over the whole world they sang the songs that I wrote you see and I played for the last four presidents and they all tell me that uh, they really love bluegrass music because it belongs to America so uh, everything just worked out awful good right there and I'm proud of it 